If one looks at transport in the present and last century, it's obvious that the steam engine is more than just a symbol of man's achievement. It has had a strong romantic appeal, and the dedication of countless thousands of train lovers probably surpasses that of even car or aeroplane enthusiasts. Which is why the end of the line, in the real and most poignant sense, is such a nostalgic sight. Here at Stratford Works in East London, old locomotives are being cut up for scrap metal at the rate of two or three every week. Ironically enough, this train graveyard is the place where some of them were actually built between 1921 and 28. Now, having been replaced in northeast London by an electric service, over 50 tank engines, as they're called, have been withdrawn from service and are being converted into scrap. Within a few days, these powerful old locomotives, once identifiable as the N7 class, will be reduced to just 60 tons of characterless steel and cast iron, copper and other non-ferrous metals. Needless to say, there is a never-ending demand from enthusiasts for souvenirs of these old-timers, whistles, name and number plates, and there have been requests for the cast-iron chimneys weighing three and a half hundred weight. Here, for example, is a number plate which will be saved for collectors. Unlike their flesh and blood counterparts, these old iron horses, as they were affectionately known, can't be put out to pasture at the end of their life service. They're not efficient enough for work anymore, yet too valuable to stand idle. Each one, in fact, is worth, in scrap, nearly 1,500 pounds. Hence we get sad, although admittedly spectacular, sights like this. Pictures like these provide a sorry but inevitable reflection of the times in which sentiment is not allowed to stand in the way of progress. The age of steam is practically dead. To an engineer, this is a very sad picture. The graveyard of engines, where past kings of the iron road are broken up. Of steel they were made, and to steel they return. Great electric magnets lift the giant girders as if they were made of cork. It's only the electric current holding it, and when the current is switched off, Nowadays, scrap steel is almost as valuable as new metal, and every pound of steel is guarded as carefully as a milligram of precious metal by a goldsmith. From the engine of the past is born the engine of the future. For scrap iron and steel for rearmament, American railroad men find a new answer to the old question, what to do with derelict goods wagons. Rattling with age, they're dragged to the breaking up yard, the wood for a bonfire, the metal for the international junk men. During the next few years, experts estimate that nearly half of the world's new steel and ironwork will consist of old metal purified by fire in great furnaces. When I was at school, they used to teach me that matter is indestructible. Now I know they were right. So these may one day be shells or bombs, or perhaps just peaceful machinery. For those who prefer this type of horsepower, we visit the locomotive works at Brighton, where some of the grand old engines of yesterday are being broken up. For the benefit of any train spotters in the audience, this is the hulk of a King Arthur class engine built at Eastley in about 1920. This, to train lovers particularly, is an unhappy sight. So over now to Eastley to see the latest multiple unit diesel electric train for the London to Hastings run. By 1958, all steam trains on the line will have been replaced by diesel-electric, similar to ordinary electric trains, except that the current required is provided by diesel engine generators carried on the trains and not from a third rail. In addition, the new train was introduced here to save the expense of widening the narrow tunnels en route, which limit the width of the coaches. By the way, driver Alf Smith has changed to these trains after 20 years with steam. In a 
12-car train, two six-car units with a powerful engine at each end of the train, 2,000 horsepower is developed, giving speeds of over 80 miles an hour, a tribute to a fine piece of engineering.